I'm going through several things this week and watching what's going on in the news and seeing the world leaders now, how they, Russia and the U.S. and several of them fixing to go at one another. And you can see it. All you got to do is watch them and listen to them talk. But then watching not just preachers out here that's not in the message, but some that say they are message churches. So I'm watching everything here at Christmas time, what they call Christmas. And I said, I'm going to see just how things are going with these fellas, see what they believe. And I don't know if y'all, how many listen to many of them at all? None? Y'all might be missing them. I didn't see a hand go up nowhere. But that, it's, Lord, 20, 30, 40 that I can pick up all time. And they're all together. Donnie Reagan, Tim Pruitt, Wayne Lawson, uh, Spencer, not the one we know at Christenberg, but another one. And Lord, I can just keep naming them. And Tim Pruitt, he's all the time got Donnie Reagan and a bunch of them preachers coming there. Well, I seen a thing on early when I get up five o'clock about every morning. And I'll turn the first thing I turn on, I read the things about the prophet, and then I turn the quote of the day on and sat and listened to it. And I said, well, now I'm done with this. I'm going to check some of these preachers out. And there was that Tim Brooke with one of the biggest churches around in Louisiana and having a Christmas special. I said, i got to listen to this. After they had their little singing and had all the kids up there doing these things and I listened to his message. He said, I know I used to be anti-Christmas, Lord, 100%. Don't mention Christmas to me because I heard about some quotes, and this was several years ago, he said. And I heard about some quotes. So I'd get them and read them where the prophet said it's a pagan worship, it's a devil worship, and we need to get away from it and all this. And get away from all this decorating trees and tinsel. So he had to twist things around and explain what the prophet was talking about. He said, when I was checking all this, I had to find out for myself, so I called, this is when uh, Brother Brandon's daughter was still living, Rebecca. He said, I called her to ask her, what did Brother Brandon do? How did he feel about Christmas? And she told him, I think, a couple things that they always done. Her and her husband. He said, that's not what I asked you. I want to know what Brother Brandon done when y'all was at home. And he said, some of the answers she gave him, and he said, I know then that the way I was looking at it, it was wrong for me to look at it that way. I thought, not, there's a plain word, but I thought, you hypocrite. He called the prophet's daughter to ask her and then took what she gave him and come up with a message to try to explain the tinsel and all this and do away with it and say it's okay. And he said, so then I found out all the quotes about it being, and I read them here a few nights ago about it being a devil worship, and a pagan worship and all of this. And he said, I found out I'd been wrong all that time. Now that is pitiful. I don't care who it is, it's pitiful. And these preachers standing in the pulpit saying things like that. But then they're the same ones that criticize Joseph, talk about him like a dog in the pulpits, and really just sit and make fun of him. So what can you expect out of a bunch like that? And I'm talking about so-called message preachers. Then it comes down to there's what Joseph is talking about when he gets on here and says, why don't you just play the tapes? Said so the congregation can at least say amen to dust say of the Lord and not have somebody out here adding to it and taking away from it. Amen. He's absolutely right. Amen. And when you watch them preachers, you can see exactly what he's talking about. They will not get, and he said the other week, <coughs> last week I told y'all, he said, if you are going to have service, he said, I'm not again. But 
Let the minister say what the word said. So, Lord help me to always. And when I heard them this week, this book come to me, and I'm going to the seal book too here in a minute. I may get that first here, the uh, one paragraph. But I want to read, let me read this first. Then I'll give you the title of the book. Show you why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. I believe it's 5.0. Might be 5.09. Let me make sure. Now I've got my pages marked from last week to who I wanted to be at. No, it's not 509. Bear with me just a minute. It's two pages that I'd like to read a couple of things before I go to that book. And I'm going to do it. It's on 520, but I was thinking I had one before that. But undoubtedly, I don't usually lose my numbers that easy but because when I was going through it today yeah here we go let me go to 512 first if you got your seal books and I'm gonna read a paragraph or two here and then on page 520 and I've read it over and over and over and then I'm gonna go to the book I'll go ahead and tell you right before I read this paragraph unveiling God now how many believe he's the word Amen. How many believe that he's been unveiled in this day? Amen. Now on page 512, what this great secret is that lays beneath this seal, listen to the prophet's words, I do not know. I couldn't make it out. Couldn't tell just what it said, but I know that it was them seven thunders other than themselves right close together, just banging seven different times. It unfolded to something else that I seen. When I seen that, I looked for the interpretation. It flew across there. I couldn't make it out. That's exactly right. The hour isn't quite yet for you. But it's moving into that cycle. How many know what a cycle is? All right. Then down at the bottom. I'm only telling you what I've seen, what had been told me. You do whatever you want to. Now there's your answer. I don't know who's going to. I read this the last two or three weekends. I don't know who's going to. Oh, what's going to take place? I do not know. I just know those seven thunders hold that mystery. Heavens was quiet. Everybody understands. Said, said amen. It may be the time, it may be the hour now that this great person that we're expecting to rise on the scene may rise on the scene. Maybe this ministry that I have tried to take the people back to the Word, did he do it? Amen. Has laid a foundation, did he do it? Amen. And if it has, I'll be leaving you for good. There won't be two of us here at the same time. If it is, he'll increase and I'll decrease. But I have been privileged by God to look and see what it is, um, to see it unfold to that much. Now that is the truth. Now, if there's got to be some great person that'll come on the scene after him, the world is not going to know nothing about it. The prophet said it'll only be a handful of people, and we don't realize really what we're hearing right here. I don't think it has dawned on us. But there's a prophet in the land now that most of the preachers are criticizing, Amen. making fun of. Amen. But I'm going to build that prophet up. Amen. I'm going to hold him up in front. I remember when the prophet was dedicating him. He said, Mama, I wonder if you'd hold him up back there and let the people see it. Amen. Well, I'm going to hold him up and see if you can see it. How are you going to do it? I'm going to do it by the word. Amen. Now, I want you to turn to page five. Oh, there's so much in between there, but I want to get these two in and then hit this book because so many things come to me today when I'm going through that. Now, do you notice the opening of the seventh seal? It's in a threefold mystery. 
This one I will speak in half spoke, that it is the mystery of the seven thunders. The seven thunders, and he didn't make a mistake here, in heaven will unfold the mystery and it'll be right at the coming of Christ because Christ said no one knew when he would return. Amen. How many believe heaven is consist of the word? Amen. But did you notice when the Jews asked him that? When we compare the scripture, Matthew 24 with the six seals, that seventh seal was left out. Because you see, Christ said only God himself knows. Not even the angel. No wonder. Here's the killer again. I keep hitting these things. It wasn't even written. Never. Now, let me repeat this again. I've done it last week and I want you to get it. It wasn't even written. Then on another page or two, what them thunder say was never written in the Bible. Amen. So if it's not written there, there ain't but one way to get it, and that's through a prophet. Just like Moses. The Old Testament. Paul, the new. William Murray Branham for the bride. Amen. Not the world. The world will never get this. But there's a bride on earth that's going to get his new name. Amen. That's going to meet him in the millennium and have a thousand years. Oh, how I thank God, devil free of this sick, cursed world we live in now. It's a shame to even turn your radio on or TV on or anything or take them out to a store. You can't keep your family away from all the trash, all the filthy talk. And I hope and pray it ain't around the bride. I hope that stuff don't go on. Nobody knows when he's coming. But there will be seven voices of these thunders that will reveal that great revelation at that time. Now, and if we don't know it, it won't be known till that time, but it will be revealed in that day and the hour that it's supposed to be revealed in. Now, to put that out there in front, then I'm going to this in 64. And I'll read the paragraphs that I wrote down here today. And I want you to listen closely to these things that I read to you. Do you love him? Amen. Are you ready for this? Amen. I told you the name of this, didn't I? The unveiling of God. Amen. Now, let me see if I need to back up here a little. Jesus said, Said that to weed down his crowd. We know what he's talking about here. So till he could get the group together and out of all those people, only 11 of them then understood actually who he was. They knew he was God and God alone. Only 11. That's what I thought it was 12. One of them was the devil. Amen. You remember that? Ain't that something? So I thought there was just man walking around. It was. But one of them was a devil. Amen. Now God has always in every age has hid behind a veil. All ages. But he's being God all the time. But he's kept himself hid from the world and reveals himself to his elected. Like the apostles at that day. Now that was God speaking in Christ. Now, I'm going to give you the page numbers if you want to check this out when you get home. That was page 6. And I'm going to go to page 11. And this, I want to really get over to you. When I told you about the preacher a while ago, he said, I've got the quotes and things where the prophet said it was a pagan worship and a devil worship. And the word was, it's time for me and you to get away from all of this. Amen. He said, it's got to be the word to curse to little children. Amen. How many was here when I read these the other, what, a week or so ago? Amen. Now I want to read something here and I hope you catch this. Let me make sure I'm not. There can be nothing broken in the scripture. Every word must be so. That's the way that I believe it. That's the way it's got to be. Not because I believe it, but because it's the word of God. Now if you notice in the beginning, one word, page one, 
in the Bible, Genesis 1, we find out all the sickness, the sorrow, the heartaches, everything that's ever happened to human beings came because one person, this will leave one word, caused all this. That's the first of the Bible, and in the last, Revelation 22, the same God said, who shall ever shall take away one word out of this or add one word to it. What happens? You take your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, how many believe this is the Lamb's Book of Life right here? Amen. Now, if you believed every word that he said, didn't take away from it or add to it, then your name is in another book. Then when that book's revealed, you hear your name in there. So I never heard mine in there. All the prophet said, how will you know it's there? He'll reveal the mysteries. You will see that. You'll believe it. You'll live it. And your name's in the book. Amen. Now how plain can that be? Now, so therefore, just take a, the little thing like, I'm going, someone always going on to me about women bobbing their hair. Now to me, as long as she does that, I don't care how saintly she does, how much she knows, she is still wrong. She wears shorts and these clothes like that. I don't care what she does, how much she can sing, how well she can preach, whatever she could do, what kind of a life she lives, it's still that one word broke. See, it's got to be every word, not a sentence, a word, one word. So the Bible is no private interpretation. It must be the word by word the way it's written. And so is this right here. Amen. Now when that prophet put, put them quotes in there and you can't hide them, I got them. And when he made them statements, he meant every word he said. Now here's the paragraph and I've read this over and over. Not only believe it, but live it. Amen. If we don't live it, then we don't believe it. Amen. We just say we do. Amen. Now what is these preachers doing out there? What are people doing that sitting right here if you break in one word and then say, I believe it? You can quiet on me already. Amen. But don't live it, then you don't believe it. Amen. Ouch. If we don't live it, then we don't believe it. We just say we do. Basing back to what I see, those disciples could not explain it, but they believed it anyhow. And they made their confession and lived to it. When all the rest of them walked away from it, they stayed with it. There it is. When I see all these preachers out here walking away from what that prophet said, well, it meant this, it meant that. No, it meant exactly what he said. That's what to do with marriage and divorce. They'll take it and twist it around. Well, I believe he meant this. No, he meant exactly what he said. Amen. Now, when it comes down to marriage and divorce, there's the killer right there. Because it took the man and put him in his place. It took the woman and put her in her place. But she is determined she's not going to stay there. And they'll even put pressure on the man that tries to stay in the world Amen. by disobeying it. Talking back to it. Trying to boss him around. Amen. Amen. But you know you're going to answer to God. Amen. So it don't matter how much you do that and then turn around and say, I believe it. You do not believe it. I'm sorry, but you do not believe it. Why? You are not living it. Amen. What was it? Keep silent. Amen. 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 You're looking at me, but... I can't help it. No, no matter what anybody else does, we believe it, and then we act upon it. If you don't do it, then you don't believe it. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let me read that part again. I, know, I usually don't get one down there. And no matter what anybody else does, we believe it, then we act upon it. If you don't do it, then you don't believe it. How many knows what acting upon it is? Amen. Whatever you say you believe, that's what you're going to do. Amen. But what do we do? Say, how does it put the pressure on the man? 
There ain't many men that loves their wives want to turn around and say, will you shut your mouth? Amen. Oh, will you please not do that? Amen. Will you please quit it? Disrespecting me? They don't want to do it. But the women does not care to put the pressure on them to make them do it. I'm talking about real man that's living the world. Because man, if you don't live it, then you don't believe it. Ouch. I have to say ouch every now and then because it bounces back. It's not just for the woman. If you don't live it, you don't believe it. No matter how much we say we do, we don't. How many believe our action speaks louder than our words? Now, notice, as he come, he had to come as son of man because the Holy Scripture said that he would. God would raise up a prophet to them. Now keep the name of this book in mind. Unveiling God. Keep it in mind how we're going to hear how he come and when he come. There'll be seven thunders that will reveal that great secret and it'll only be to the bride because that's the only ones he's coming to. Amen. Now, so he could not come calling himself son of God because it wasn't that dispensation. He was the son of man prophesied to fulfill and reveal it to them all the things that had been done and typed of what he was. Then he was on earth as son of man. How many believe that? Amen. You believe that's what Jesus said in his own self? Now, look at the little woman. Run to him and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He never as much as raised his head. She had no claims on him as son of David. No more than my daughter has claims on me as husband. Boy, he knows how to make it plain, don't he? Now notice, you have to know these words and these things. Look at Hattie Wright that time when the third pool. You remember it? All of, of all the everything that that woman said, the right thing. You got to say the right word, the right thing to God. Amen. One of the best things you can say when you hear the word is say amen to it. Amen. What does amen mean? So be it. Amen. Notice, he come first as the prophet. They crucified him. His own crucified him. He came as son of man. Then after the Holy Spirit came, he was then son of God. God is a spirit. How many believe that happened on the day of Pentecost? When it fell upon them. So he come as son of God. He was the Holy Spirit. Son of God. He lived through the church. The church ages as son of God. The Holy Spirit. Now in the millennium, don't miss this part, he'll be son of David. Wonder who's going to find that out. Wonder how we're going to find that out. Amen. But one way if you're going to find it out. Seven thunders hold that mystery. Amen. How he come and when he come. How'd he come? And a prophet named William Murray Brown. Amen. Where's he at now? Revealing himself as son of David. Not son of man. Not son of God. But as son of David for the millennium, which is still out in front of us. So if he's going to be son of David, then he's got to reveal himself of what he will be and who he will be. You know who's holding that mystery? Do I have to say it again? Somebody's holding it. But they're not holding it any longer. They're letting the bride know what we're going to get when we go into the millennium. You want to be his wife? You want to be his bride? Then you got to have his name. And if you don't have his name, you're not going. <coughs> so what will that thousand years be? A honeymoon. Amen. For who? Him and his bride. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of that bride. Amen. He'll be son of David up on the throne of his father. He is the son of David. Now on page 12, I'm trying to keep these things straight. But how many got what I just read right there? Amen. On page 11, if you say you believe it, then you will live it. And if you don't live it, you don't believe it. Amen. Then think of it. 
this thing called Christmas Amen. that we just come to. No matter how much you say you believe it, if you don't believe it. What about this thing called marriage and divorce? Amen. No matter how much we say we believe it, if we don't live it, then we don't believe it. Amen. Marriage and divorce is not just polygamy we're talking about. It's women being in silence, obeying their husband. Not remarrying with, uh, women that's got a living husband. Amen. No woman that knows the word that is really a believer does not want to go marry again as long as she's got a living husband. Amen. They don't want to do it. Amen. Now, what about the things they say about Joseph? Look, I can tell you what the prophet said. I can tell you what God said. Joseph, my son, thou art a prophet. Amen. The prophet said, God spoke to him. Preachers Amen. that make fun of him, their remarks, just because somebody named Joseph don't mean they're a prophet. God have mercy on them hypocrites. Amen. The prophet said, God spoke to me in a closet Amen. and said, you will have a son. Amen. You will call his name Joseph. Amen. God sent him and God named him. And they're missing the very thing they say they're believing is the word. Amen. They do not believe it. But I don't know about you. I don't just say I believe it. I want to live it. Amen. I'm living it right in front of you tonight, preaching it, knowing it's going out here. Amen. I'm not ashamed of this. Amen. Let me get back up here. Page 12. Now remember, between the Son of God in the latter seeing church age, they put him out. And in Luke, he said he would be revealed again as son of man, the prophet. I said, this is exactly what he said. Son of man, the prophet. Amen. Have we had a prophet in this day? Amen. Was his name William Murray Branham? Amen. Do you know of any more that come in that day? Besides him? To be here as son of man? I don't. It was him. Amen. Son of man, the prophet. He revealed himself in this day. Now do you believe that? Amen. Don't just speak it. Listen. Now, the prophet fulfilled and the rest of it. The scriptures tie perfectly together. Son of man, son of David. What was it? It's the same God all the time just changing his form. He just changes it. It's a great drama to him that he is acting out. How many believe before the fall ever took place, back before man was ever put here? How many believe that he was just God? He wasn't even God then. He was the eternal. Amen. But it was in him to be a savior and there was never lost. Amen. It was in him to be a healer. There wasn't nothing sick. Amen. So when he put man here, created all the animals, everything was going perfect. Nothing wrong. But he looked down one day, all the animals had a mate. They didn't have one in bunch. They had the male and his mate. All the animals. But when he looked down and saw Adam, he said he was lonely. He didn't have a mate. So God put Adam to sleep, done the first surgery that was ever done, took a rib from him and formed around that and made a woman. Amen. And there is where Satan went when he came. Is that right? Amen. He went to the woman because she was, now I was listening to Perry Green, and I know he might hear this, but he was talking about, got a message up called the serpent seed. Revealing it. And he said, I know a lot of people say, well, it was sex that happened in the Garden of Eden and all this. But he said, I, I don't believe that, never have believed it. But it'll turn right around and tell you that everything William Brown ever prophesied happened. Amen. Telling you the man never missed. Amen. And he didn't miss. But then turn around and he listened to the prophet. His dad was an older man. He, he was in the prophet's services and, and knows what happened. 
But then turn around and make a statement like that. I do not believe it was sex. I don't think that. I know that doctrine's out there. Well, that doctrine is what's right. Amen. No, all others is wrong, but that doctrine is right. Amen. How do you know? It come to the prophet and he revealed it. Just like he did marriage and divorce and all the rest of it. Now, let me get back to this. He came as son of man, the prophet, done exactly even the little woman in all of her sins. There at the well, she recognized him. She said, we know the Messiah is coming, which is called the Christ. That's what he'll do. She recognized because she was a predestinated seed. Does that mean anything to you? Amen. Did you recognize it tonight? Amen. Do you believe what that prophet said to be the truth? Amen. You believe it to be thus saith the Lord? Amen. Then you know seven thunders is holding something that the world will never get a hold of. Amen. But the bride is going to hear it. For the rest of them didn't recognize. They had nothing to recognize with. They were in sin to begin with. For his act, he changes his form. Then he came the form of son of man. Now listen to this. Reformers age, Wesley, Luther, all down through, then we find out that they got it so bundled up, just like the Israelites did, till when he does appear in the last days, in the Pentecostal age as the Holy Spirit, they rejected it. They did the same thing Israel did. And what does he do now? Returns back as son of man. Amen. Not son of God. They turned him out. They didn't want nothing to do with him. But he returns again then as what? Son of man. There is William Murray Brown. Amen. They don't believe it but I believe it 100%. And if I believe it, I'm going to preach it. And if I can't back it up by the word, I'm not going to preach it. Now, and then from that, from what? Son of man to son of David. Let me go back to what I read in the seal book. Nobody don't know when he's coming, even how he's going to come. But there will be. He didn't say there has been, but there will be seven thunder. And he even said, I don't know who's going to do it. But I know they hold that mystery. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to ask you, has he already come and the world's looking for him? Amen. But he's already come. They missed him. And most of the people that say they believe the message, they have missed him also. Amen. Returns. Then as... Son of man, then to that son of David. See how close we are, people? Son of man, son of David. He revealed himself in the last days as son of man. Now listen, according to Malachi 4 and all of the prophecies pertaining to this hour, no more dealing with the church. They put him out on the outside. And he'd been out there knocking. Him. And they wouldn't let him in. Amen. How did he come, Brother Elwood? He come in a prophet named William Murray Brown. God did. The prophet was the veil that God was hid behind. Amen. How many believe Jesus was the veil that God was hid in? What did Jesus tell him one time? He said, flesh and blood that you're looking at here did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. In other words, what you're looking at didn't reveal it, but what is talking through me did reveal it. Amen. Now, William Burr and Branham was the veil that God was hid behind. Amen. Now let me go over here a few pages. I keep wanting to take off on a few things. Page 17. And if you're all writing these down, you want to read it? Let me read it at the bottom of 16. Notice. He said to them, now this is Jesus talking in the Bible, except this corn of wheat falls into the ground, it abideth alone. They couldn't understand how or why that they couldn't see him. There stood a man. They come to see God. They seen a man. They couldn't see God because God was veiled to them. Now keep that on your mind. God was veiled in a man. They, 
They could say now, no man can do these works except it be God. Amen. Did you know the one that just died of COVID that I was telling you about? The one that owned the Trinity broadcast. Every one of them. Look how many preachers has come out and said these things. Look at her stone. Look at uh, T.L. Osborne. They'll tell you on these stations, I hear them talking still yet. They'll say, I saw God in that little man. No man could do these works except it was God with them. Man, and there was, I, there were, I saw God in that little man. I can get them up, get the words up and show them to And now, his words was after he said that, but get all this foolishness after that come later. You know what I saw about this word right here? Man, they did not want the word. Man. They wanted the healing that they had been raised. So listen, they can say no man can do these works except it be God. No man can do it. And how here stands a man, and yet the works of God is manifested through him. They couldn't understand God was veiled. How many times did that prophet say, not me, I'm just a man. But listen, did he be in the discernment and standing and talking and telling people things? Then he'd stop and say, was those things true? What he said, what what was said said, I, can, I don't know what was said. He didn't know. It wasn't him doing the talking. Amen. But he said, was it true? They had to say, yeah. He is veiled in a man as he always was. But it was veiled unto them. He was in his human temple. Amen. Who was? God was. Amen. Now listen to the words of this prophet, please. Now be real careful. I wonder if they have. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God failed, hiding himself from the world, veiled in a human being. Here was God. And those Greeks said, oh, we would see him. You know, the whole world's hollering that today. How many, oh, they get so upset. It was something I watched Fox News a, a lot. They're about the most sensible that you can watch. But they had a big Christmas tree outside of their station. And how many saw what happened? Well. A man set it on fire one night. <laughs> Burn it. I got to stand up one night. Burn it to the ground. Lord, they come in that morning. They was crying. Having a fit. <clears throat> oh, some people just don't believe in Christmas. Talking about how crazy the man was. And they found the man that done it, locked him up, let him right back out because they don't have laws to keep them up no more. No matter what you do, you get right back out. That's what our world leaders have done. But to watch them, and then even the, some of the preachers that comes on there, oh, we're going to put back what they had back in the day. Bigger and brighter. And their words was, you can't stop us. We get to serve our God whether they like it or not. That is their God. Amen. But not a real believer. Amen. Lord, back this thing up. You just pray for me with my legs and feet. I looked at that clock and done 25 after. Now, like those disciples, they couldn't explain about eating his body, drinking his blood, but they had done died to those things. They were dead to the principles. They were dead to Christ. No matter what it is or how much the feet looked like he had, they still believed it. They could see in that man, a man that eat, that drank, that fished and slept, everything else was born right here on earth and walked with them, talked with them, wore clothes like the rest of them, but they but that was God to them. Amen. Now, the Greeks couldn't see him because he was hid from them in a human being. Notice his words to them, except this corn of wheat falls into the ground. Was he talking about himself here? How many believes it happened? Amen. But listen to this. 
God veiled in the form of a man, hid himself from their view. They could only see a man, but those predestinated seen God. Has it happened again in this day? Amen. Most of the world looks, well, he's just a man like everybody else. No, but that, what does that bribe look? Amen. They look, they see God. Amen. Not saying Brother Branham was God. That was the veil that God was hid in. Amen. God's the Word. Amen. What about them thunders that's on earth right now? Amen. You believe God's veil somewhere right now? Amen. And the world will never get it, but there's a bride that's got her ears open. Amen. She's listening to every word. Amen. You have to become the word. The word has to become you. Amen. Now, they see the one saw a man, the other one saw God. And it was God veiled in a human being, making both of them right, but your faith in that is what you don't see. You believe it anyhow. God veiled in a human being. He was in that flesh, and that flesh was his veil. The veil was rent, and God made, might be made manifest. Now, what did he say? Unless, except this corn of wheat falls into the ground, it will abide alone. In the Old Testament, God was hid when he was on the mercy seat by a veil. In the Old Testament, God was in his temple. Wait a minute. In, yeah, I got that right. But he, the people come in and worship like this. But remember, there was a veil. Amen. That he and God. They know God was there. They couldn't see him. That pillar of fire never appeared anymore there. Did you notice? There was not one time in the scripture from the time that pillar of fire went, by, went in behind that veil that it ever showed again until it come from Jesus Christ because God was veiled. Amen. How many believe Moses talked to that pillar of fire? Amen. How many believe that pillar of fire was God? Amen. How many believe we're privileged enough to have the stuff today to show we took his picture in this day we're living in? Had to be a pretty important man, didn't it? Amen. For God to have his picture took with him. Amen. But then, when Jesus was here on earth, you never heard of that pillar of fire. Why? It went behind the veil. Amen. But then when he left here, what was it struck Paul down? Struck the saw at that time? A pillar of fire. Amen. And what did that fellow say? Lord, who are you? And a voice come from that pillar of fire. What did it say? It wasn't Jesus standing there, but that pillar of fire, because you can't separate it. What spoke out of that pillar of fire? He said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. Why? He had to come out from behind that veil again. Amen. What was that body laying on the mercy seat? For what? For me and for you. Amen. He didn't come and die for himself. He didn't need redeemed, but I did. Amen. You did. Amen. I'm tired of this old body that's full of sickness and hurting and pain. Amen. And it's all for a reason. Something's making me want it worse than ever right now. Amen. Satan thinks he's getting by with everything, but he ain't. He's just pushing me into it more and more and more. Amen. I know something's going to happen before long. I know one day I'm going to be walking perfect again. Amen. I won't just be walking perfect. I'll be running. I might be running these aisles one night. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about you, but every one of us have aching pains all the time. Amen. But there's a promise. All right. Let me turn over here a minute to page 19. In the last days, I want to make sure I keep looking. I marked so many things today and last night. In the last days, he's supposed to return again. A pillar of fire is supposed to come back again to manifest the Son of Man. See, to show the Word. The light, the traditions that had been will be wiped away. What did you say about marriage and divorce? What did you say about that third pool? <coughs> or you'll see something out there, some odd something happened out there in my ministry. Amen. Won't be nothing simple, but boy, it's going to be different than the regular trend you've been used to. Amen. Amen. The tradition that has been will be wiped away. 
What was Heart of Damn Traditions? Putting up a Christmas tree. Amen. Amen. Swapping gifts. Amen. 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 But all that was wiped away. And what are some of these softy preachers in the pulpit? Afraid they're going to lose a few people or something? Well, we're going to go ahead and celebrate Christmas God. I don't think he meant He meant exactly what he said. Amen. It is a devil worship, a pagan doctrine, and that is of the devil and God, and Satan does not get along. Amen. So if God's in you, you cannot handle that trash. Amen. Amen. I know where it comes from. Do you? Amen. Now, on page 22, I'm going to have to stop here in just a minute. I'll read this one and stop, but I hope we're able to come tomorrow night because, Lord, I got so much in here. Backing up. How many of you follow what I'm saying now? Do you see what I went read in the sealed book? Amen. Do you believe this is backing it up 100%? Amen. You believe God's being unveiled in front of you? Do you believe them thunders knows when he comes and how he comes? Amen. All right. And when the word is unveiled, oh my, what kind of face will it be? It had to be veiled. It's got to be. Now notice, so the spirit is veiled in a human temple. See, he to speak to natural words with a natural veil. Now, but this is spirit that comes upon the promised word for this age. Do we have a promised word for this age we're living in right now? Amen. Glory. All right. And bring forth and manifest not two tables of stone, but the presence of the living God. Not a mythical thought, some made up or some Houdini trick, but the very promise of God revealed and made manifest right before us. What sort of a veil will that be behind? And to lose that, it's over. Wonder what kind of veil. Well, if he was hid in this day and he's already come, is somebody here on earth right now revealing to the bride, not the world, to be only be a handful of people, revealing to the bride how he come. Amen. Revealing to the bride when he come. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Then seven thunders hold some kind of mystery. Amen. And that's why the rest of the world, I'm losing my lead to my water here. I don't work. It's in the floor. And I'm not bending over to get it off. Pitch right over on my head, right in front of y'all right now. But how many got something out of this tonight? Amen. We're sitting here hearing something that thousands of preachers that are saying their message preachers will never be able to give their congregation. Amen. But if I tell you something, that the prophet has not already said, I'll tell you, I've said it before, get out of here and don't ever come back. But if you see what I'm saying, already been spoken by that prophet, then you better hold on to it for everything that's in you. Amen. Women, don't get mad and upset. Men, don't get mad at the preacher. Because you got to be that word also. Amen. And it don't matter how much you say. I'm talking to the man now. I believe it, I believe it. When you don't live it, I can't hear your words. Because we don't believe it. And women, do you see how important that is? Do you see where you belong? But they will not get in their place. And it happened in the beginning and it's happening again in the end. It's pitiful. But we, there's nobody here will ever have an excuse and say, I didn't know. Because God, if He's got a servant in the land, He's going to stand and give you that word. And it's up to you what you do with it. Amen. Men and women, God bless you. Ain't you glad you don't have a preacher say it up here saying, Merry Christmas. Santa Claus being good to you? No, that's a devil worship. Amen. And I don't care what the rest of them say I hear. I'll have nothing in the world to do with it. Amen. Not at all. God bless you. And hope we'll be here tomorrow night. I'll let you know early. I just tell them, put it up, that we're going to have it or not have it. But 
Pray that we will, because I'd like to hear a little bit more of this, wouldn't you? God bless you, everybody. Thank you.